you know, it's pretty amazing that people, uh, I know some of the things that we say are a little out there, of course, as far as, uh, what's common, but, uh, it's amazing even a simple thing that we'll say on the radio about, we want you to be free. Think about how many people have called in and attacked on the different shows. <laughs> oh, yeah, you want to be free? Yeah, well, you're stupid. <laughs> Come on. People, we've got to wake up. I mean, no, no. okay, let's not... You're just trying to scare we people. We can't even get people to go back to being what the country was founded on, much less beyond that. I mean, we can't even... I mean, Dave likes to talk a lot about what's beyond, and I'll agree with what's beyond, like, a representative republic actually having just a free market society. But we can't even get people to agree that we should go back to a constitutional government. Or, let's say, okay, we have one now. We can't even get people to go back to say, well, let's go back to how our founders founded this country. Let's go back and think like they thought. Let's go back to have at least some individual liberty. And people it's, are freaked out about that. It's been in a steady decline, though. I mean, I, I was talking to Josh earlier in the week, yeah, Andrew Johnson, when he um, became president after Lincoln got shot in the head. All of the uh, – nobody wanted him to be president, and they made fun of him in the tabloids at the time. And this is in the 1870s, making fun of him, calling him a parrot, and all the pictures of him were a parrot because all he ever said was we need to enforce the Constitution. We need to make sure the Constitution is being upheld. we got to get this government reined in and following the Constitution. And so he was made fun of by both sides, Republican and Democrat, uh, calling him the parrot head. Things haven't changed much. No, not at all. Four five eight, talk the number. We go on to the next call. Good morning. You're on the air on Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hello. Hey, who is this? Are you a parrot head? Joe. Joe, what's Joe. on your mind? You there? Yeah, go ahead. Hi. Uh, I, I was thinking to the uh, one of your previous callers. I think it was the, the one before the pre the one just called. Um, I think I think he was he was, he was struggling to uh, to say that uh, he had an ideal that, that we were it was hard to reach. And uh, and the criticism was, of course, as well. Look at what we have now; it doesn't seem to be working, and so forth. I think what he's looking for is a word like optimization. Basically, we live in a dynamic world. It isn't a static world. No static constitution can actually govern our lives. No Ten Commandments can govern our lives. We are dynamic, and we will change. Therefore, we have to always assess where we are in the system at the time, and make uh, make some decisions. Uh, you know, Nietzsche's, uh, one of his aphorisms was that uh, uh, convictions is the, uh, are the greatest enemies of reason. Once you lock yourself down to something, if that something is wrong or doesn't isn't suitable for what's going on right now, you have to be able to change your convictions, quote. And I think that's the problem. I mean, we're, we're, when you guys speak, it sounds to me like you're looking for some ideal uh, I don't know if it's a 1776 ideal or not. I don't know what it is, but basically, hey, whatever it is, it won't last. You, you've actually, you've actually just outlined the most fundamental argument against a uh, a state regime, um, which is any any state that enforces laws that are not subject to um, some sort of competition, right? Locks itself into to laws that can't change with uh, with market conditions, basically. It's a non-dynamic system. And in order for life to exist, you have to have a dynamic system that responds to the the needs of the entities within that system, right? And we already sure. have that. We already have that. It's called the market. And the market's not perfect. And the, mar- the market's never at equilibrium either, right? It just it chases equilibrium. Sometimes it overshoots. Sometimes it undershoots. And so having a market... In ideas, you know, having a market in services, having a market in whatever, has provided the most enormous increase in human wealth in the entire history of of the known world, right? But even, and even so we have this one area that we don't allow uh, dynamic change in, and what is that? That's the state, right? And we say, no, this, you know, the state must be this or must be that. And even the people who say, well, the state... The state laws should be flexible. They still say they should only be flexible to what I want them to be. They shouldn't be subject, you know, they shouldn't be subject to supply and demand as as people ask. And so, um, yeah, that's a, you've just made the uh, the best argument for a stateless society. I really appreciate that. Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, the argument also works against you because uh, you uh, you may, if you you read history, I'm certain that uh, you may understand that a handful of people controlled the United States through their wealth. 
at some point in our history. Before we started saying, oh, yeah, and those that. people have only been able to do that through the state. If you if you go back and look, you're talking about you know the Rockefellers and the Carnegies and and what have you, right? They were only able to enact the Federal Reserve Act because they had the state to force legal tender on people. Uh, exactly. Without the Federal Reserve Act, people could have chosen their own money, which is what a free market in money is. F.A. Hayek's written extensively on how that could emerge, but it can only emerge in the absence of a state. And so, I mean, your argument just holds holds true. It's so consistent, um, and that's that's the beauty of it. And I, I've I've made that same argument myself for years, and it always falls on deaf ears. So I'm really I'm really well, glad that one of the callers has has figured it out and nailed it. Well, before you grab onto it, I'm not convinced that you're right about what you're saying. Uh, you're saying these wealthy people use the state, like the railroads, for example, to uh, imp- increase and control their wealth. What, uh, what I'm saying is something quite different. I'm saying that the state itself is simply an instrument of those business guys. That's all it is. It could be They could have a private army do the same thing if there was no state. Ah, but the perceived notion of legitimacy is what allows it to perpetuate exactly. itself. Exactly. Now, now you're inventing something. No. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not, actually, because people, because that's how they passed the Federal Reserve Act, is they actually, the first time they introduced it as the Aldrich Act, right, it got voted down because people knew it was from the bankers. So the next time the bankers introduced it, they ran a reverse campaign where they said, we're against this thing because <clears throat> because the government wants to turn the screws on us. And people went, oh, the, the government's going to save us from the banks because the, there's perceived legitimacy. We've elected the government, therefore it's on our side. Whereas if they were just if it were just the banks pushing this this bill like it was the first time and the second time but people didn't know it the second time, it would have never happened. Just like the first time it didn't happen. So the perceived the perceived legitimacy of an institution that has the monopoly on the use of force, and this this false notion that we are or we create this institution somehow that enslaves us, is what is what gives that entity such power, whether it's controlled by private interests or not, and so. Eradicating that idea gives gives people uh, it places the burden of due diligence on people to examine it. Exactly. Now, look, take the example that we were talking about earlier with the TSA. If some private company just simply declared itself it was going to start searching people at the airport and just started doing it, they would get shot. There, there would be an outcry. Yeah, forget about it. Okay. And but you turn it around and now it's this government created, government sanctioned group of well, a Republican private, sanctioned. Yeah, exactly. You're sanctioned by the party of, well, the party that happened to be in power at the time. God's party. Well, whatever. Uh, the, the point is this. It would not survive if it were a private firm attempting to do that, would it? No, you mean like the people that uh, check you out when you go into, the, uh, into BP up north? Uh, okay. No, no, because you, you, you agree to that. The reason people do that is because they get paid to do it. Well, I mean, you you agree to what? You want to go to visit the North Slope, and you have to go through their gate. And you <clears> right. Well, that's that's privately on that's privately on. Well, it's not ah. private. It's not privately on property because the state ah. prevents that. But it's the same as if somebody comes into my house who I have not invited. I can say no, you can't come into my house because they're law enforcement. Pro- property boundaries allow us to uh, delineate what is mine from what is yours to resolve. To resolve well, disputes well, with the least contention possible. Now, well, now have, the state, the state says that it has these public boundaries, right, which we can all use. But they're actually, they are actually not. It's not ours. The the farce of of public stuff, public roads, whatever. They're not actually everyone's roads. Uh, there's they're just owned by a monopoly, which we can't question. If they were, if they were. Well, if they were public, they would be. You could homestead them, right? You would own part of them or whatever. And that's not true of uh, of what the state tells us um, public property really is. Well, I don't want to hold you any longer, but I, I I think that what you do here, and this is this is my actual honest opinion. I'm not just saying any old thing. Uh, you you have a lot of rationalizations that, that defend the, what is essentially indefensible. You you change the words, change the language. You always throw in these, these something or these ideas that you that you have. Uh, uh, an no, they're not my they're not my ideas. Well, if different, you if you read if you read who I talk about constantly, you'll find who the ideas are and how they cross reference. Well, and I, some I of it goes that. back to Locke, some goes yeah, back to the Greeks, some doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Greeks the Greeks are all idiots. They're right? bogus ideas. I agree with that. Oh, oh they're bo- some of these are bogus ideas. I mean, when you say that uh, this private property and the guy has guards at his property, oh well, that's not the state. Well, it doesn't make any difference. If someone comes into your house and takes your family and they've got arms, they are the state. 
It doesn't make any difference. I, I agree with that them. exactly. Yeah, anyone yeah, anyone you know, using is, force unjustly is basically doing I'm what the state does. Unjustly, I don't know what unjustly means. That that means they're that means they are aggressing against someone else. It's called oh, no, it's the non no, no, there's no, the no, non-aggression no. principle. Where, it's the where basis. my elbow ends, your nose begins. Well, you don't you can't define the aggression to me. I mean, yeah, actually, that can be delineated fairly clearly. Oh yeah, oh, is that right? Well, yeah. now you have a kid who's born in the world, and everybody else owns everything. Does he have a right to have some of it? And if so, why? And if so, how? What does that have to Who do with aggression? That? That you know, you can come over to my house in the middle of the night and try to do take something from my house or injure one of my family, and you'll find out what aggression is. I'll <laughs> well, define well, it very, I mean, very well. For now, you. But however, well, Josh, you know, if if you're defending yourself against the, you really he's the aggressor for something and trying to take something from your house, isn't he? Counter aggression. No, no, that's not true. What if what if there's only two pieces of the property and one guy's born later than the other, and the other guy says I own it all because I was here first? Whose property is it? The guy. That so you're it? advocating complete, complete, complete. No, what I'm saying is, if if a guy comes second, doesn't he have a right to live? Doesn't he have Absolutely. a right to have something? And if the guy that already owns it won't give it to him, he already owns it, what happens? Well, the guy... Th that's th kind of a non-starter. Yeah, anyway. We have plenty of property out there. I mean... They're... No, 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 no. This is... You, you guys... You see, you have no, even if you, like if you say there isn't, isn't, that's where... That's, that is where... No, that is where the market comes in play. Actually, exactly. that was one of Hayek's uh, arguments for a state, is he said, well, what if there's some guy who has a, the headwaters of a river and he can hoard all the water and, and make everybody thirsty to the point where, you know, whatever. Now, if he does that, and if he does that in a society that respects private property and market, you know, market fork, the guy will go broke because the guy has all the water, but he has no food, right? He has no, he has no energy, you know, he has no electricity or oil or whatever, except when he interacts with other people. Or, the the market is social the market is social interaction that is if, such an absurd in, idea that's been uh, disproven so many times well, no, 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 no actually name, name one time one time, one time it's been you, disproven let me, let me tell you what's funny about that let me tell you what's funny about that there was a guy there was a guy who was who was t arguing with me uh, a couple weeks ago and he was saying well if you allowed private control of waterways they would just flood whoever they wanted whenever it felt convenient and they would they would direct the water in a certain direction, and, and there'd be no, you know, river operators would have no uh, recourse, and property owners would have no recourse. And that was really funny to me, because if we look at what happened in the Mississippi this spring, that's what happened. But it wasn't because private ownership of waterways. It was because the government had levied the Mississippi, and they dumped the floodwaters into whatever town was the most politically expedient. And it was the government who did that. And there was no recourse for the property owners, and that's just the way it was. But what, no, what you're, what you're trying to say is that it, because one thing is bad, the other thing is good. I don't think that's true. No, no, it's not. It's not. Good. Nothing's perfect by no, by any means. Exactly. Humans humans are fundamentally flawed. So the question is not the question is not what is perfect because that's a waste of time to look for that. The question is how can disputes be resolved with the least conflict, right? The question is with man being imperfect, does it make the situation better for imperfect man to rule over imperfect man? That's well, the question. Wait a Wait a minute. I would like to uh, imperfect and perfect. I don't know what that means, and I certainly don't know what dispute. I mean conflict, because obviously the, the guy with you just said that if somebody tries to take his house, he's going to shoot them. Hey, I we mean, got a lot. We got a lot of folks still waiting to uh, to sound off today. Appreciate the phone call. Four five eight talk is the number. We move on to the next call. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Good morning. You still there? Hello. Hey, who is this? Yes. Uh, where do I find a source for the uh, anti-federalist papers? Uh, you can find them online. Uh, in in print, I'm not sure exactly where you'd find it. If you just Google them, you'll find uh, PDFs of most of them. Um, I have a print copy I can give to Aaron if if you want to go to his store and get it. Okay, thank you. Appreciate the call. 458 Donk is the number we move on. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? John here. John, what's on your mind? Hey, hey. John. Dave, you got to answer your email I sent you about your argument for yeah, I've been, no government. I've been busy. But I understand. But anyway, I guess I, I get from listening to you today that internal security, domestic security, can be handled in, say, the Somalian fashion. But how do you handle it on the level of, like, nation states? I mean, would yeah, you really no, be that's able great. to do that corporate-wise? Well, well, 